Welcome to our screencast about Hinduism. Hinduism is the most populous religion that we've studied so far. There are more Hindus than any of the other religions that we've studied. And Hinduism is also the most philosophically complex religion or belief system that we're going to study all term. So I'm going to try to get through some of the basic ideas, but we want to start the same place we started with Zoroastrianism, with the ancient Aryan migration. And we talked about how Zoroastrians moved into what is now Persia. Well, ancient Aryans also moved into northern India. In fact, it's the more famous part. And so Zoroastrianism and Hinduism share the ancient Aryan religion. Naming Hinduism is also a big problem. This is the Om symbol, and so that's one way that you can represent it. But Hinduism is a uh, transliteration of other terms. So, But again, what I'm going to do now is go through and try to get some of the really basic uh, topics about it. One of the first things that a lot of times Hinduism is labeled as a polytheistic belief, and that's not terrible from our perspective, because you do see lots of different gods, and they look like, oh look, there are all the different gods. But uh, many Hindus, and this is quite an old idea, believe that those gods are separate, re separate incarnations of a single world force, and so that's a little bit complicated. We'll come back to it later. I'm going to spend most of my time today talking about Hindu cosmology. And we know from before that cosmology is the study of how the universe began and how it works. And I'm especially interested in how Hindus believe that the world works, because there are some key philosophical ideas in Hindu cosmology that connect to politics, society, um, and ethics, some of the things that we've talked about before. This, by the way, is a mandala, and it's filled with symbolism for how different parts of the world's world are, and uh, we really don't have time to get into that, but it's a beautiful object, and uh, this is a part of a tradition that is in other belief systems, too. The first idea I'm going to talk about is Dharma, and it's really at the heart of Hindu philosophy, ethics, and uh, cosmology, and it says, there is some role for you in life. The world wants you to do something, and that's your Dharma, that's your your life work. And traditionally, at least, you knew what your dharma was because of the caste system, depending on what your parents were, what their job was. For instance, in the sudra, if you were a commoner or a farmer, or if you were a brahmin and you would be a priest or academic, you would know that was your dharma. You had to follow that path and try to do your best at it. And one of the reasons you have to do your best is karma. And karma, simply put, is how well do you do at your dharma? Are you good at it? Do you work hard to fulfill it? Do you keep working at it? Then you get good karma. Uh, it's not really what we think of as the West as if you do something bad now, something bad will happen to you later. But there are some consequences for karma. And those consequences come in the system of samsara, which is the system of uh, life, death, and rebirth. And Basically, this is showing that you live, you die, you get pulled through this netherworld over here by these demons, and then you come back to the other side in life. And where you're born, we talked about that, is based on the caste system. And then your life, your dharma, if you follow that well, you get positive karma. And then as you get reborn, you can move up the caste system. You can go from being a farmer, if you, have good, if you follow that dharma, have good karma, you can move up and become a landowner, and so on. And... One of the key philosophical ideas that's necessary for this is that you have to exist after you die. There has to be some part of you that goes, even after you die, it gets pulled by these demons and then is reborn. That There needs to be something there. And obviously it's not your body because your body wastes away. And so one of the key ideas in Hindu, Hinduism is this idea of Atman, which is your soul. Something that... Uh, you know, is immaterial within your body, but that when you die, it goes on to be reborn. But it's more complicated than just a soul, because the truth about Atman is that it's not, it doesn't belong to you. Atman is actually part of the world force, which is called Brahman. But it's also, in some ways, the god, the true god of Hinduism. And that's why polytheism is complicated, because they're actually part of Brahman. And this world force moves through everything, is eternal, is powerful, and your Atman, your soul, is part of it. And when you realize that, then you achieve what's called moksha. And moksha is a freeing from the cycle of samsara, a direct connection with Brahman. You become part of the world force in a direct way. You are freed from your physical body, and you become directly part of Brahman. 
So that idea leads to some pretty interesting philosophical ramifications. And one of the most interesting is this quotation from Krishna. And he says, That which is can never cease to be. That which is not will never be. And this is his answer to the question, Ken, is it okay for us to kill people sometimes? And he says, yes, if you're a warrior soul, if you're a, of the warrior caste, your dharma is to kill people. And anyway, those bodies, they've never existed. They don't exist. They're not real. The only thing that's real is the atman to those bodies. And you can't kill the atman because it's part of the eternal brahman and you can't hurt that. So the key thing there is that yeah, that's, those things are, exist forever. And another way that this comes into Hinduism is these are the three main gods and all of them are also part of that Brahman. So when you achieve moksha, you kind of achieve, you're not the same as them, but you also achieve the same connection that they have with Brahman. So each of those gods is just part of Brahman. So hopefully I've been selling this moksha idea to you and you want to become it now. Well, let me tell you how. First of all, you have to climb the ladder of the caste system. You have to move up and eventually become Brahman. But that's not enough. Once you're Brahmin, you have to have constant devotion to your goal. You have to practice, meditate, do yoga, study, all of these things. And so you can move up this final ladder. This is a modern painting representing this. Get rid of all of these bad emotions and move up this final ladder through study and sense control and spiritual knowledge. And then you'll achieve moksha. And then you will be totally awesome. And that's the final goal of Hinduism, that realization. Whew. So, a lot of uh, philosophy, a lot of cosmology in here, but I think Hinduism is really fascinating. Like I said, probably the most complicated uh, and complex belief system that we'll study, uh, and definitely one of the oldest, uh, sharing that initial beginning with Zoroastrianism. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and uh, come back next time for Buddhism, which will be a lot of the same ideas with a different twist. Thank you very much.